Good evening, good night, good morning. Whenever time this gets to you, this is your girl Yechende Fellow Thomas, aka Miss T from Yetball Network Entertainment. I'm here live uh, to talk to you guys. First, I want to give God the glory for keeping me alive and for keeping you all safe too during this pandemic. It is not by our might, it is not by our righteousness, it is not by our power, all the good things we are doing, but by His grace. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Allah, and thank you to the most uh, high God that we all believe in, however you serve Him. Uh, today I'll be talking to us about annual checkup. Some people will call it physician visits. Some people will call it yearly visits to your medical doctors. But my question is this, when was your last uh, physical checkup? When was the last time you were able to go see a doctor? When was the last time somebody really examined you? When was the last time your blood pressure was taken? When was the last time that your blood work were done? When was the last time that you had a colonoscopy done? You know, if you're 50 or if you have history of colorectal cancer, you should be having that done, at least by 35, 40. When was the last time you have a PSA level done for those people who have prostate cancer history? When was the last time you have your breast examined? When was the last time you have your teeth examined? When was the last time you see a dentist? When was the last time you get your earring to be looked into, depending on your age? When was the last time your eyes were being looked into? I decided to talk about this uh, with you all because many at times, especially black Americans, African descendants as well, we are fond of not seeing the doctor. Uh, I'm included. I'm not as an as narrated. I don't see my doctor unless I'm dying. And trust me, when my doctor see me, he really knows something is wrong with me. And when I'm really sick, I'm going to walk. So it's like I'm waiting for paramedics to pick me up. Why should that happen? And I'm into health line. So today I'm coming out and I'm going to challenge you because it is by His grace that you are able to sail through this last six months. It's not because you are righteous or because of the power you have, but because God is keeping you safe. So I'm going to challenge you to pick that phone up tomorrow and call your doctor if you have insurance. Call your doctor up and schedule an appointment for you to be checked up. Routine visits, your yearly checkup, or maybe a follow-up one. If not, if you don't have a doctor or you don't have insurance, you can always go to the walk-in clinics. There are some nearby, you can Google it. Um, uh, back in the days, it's like $60, but right now it will run you maybe like $120, um, up to like $240, depending. Uh, but if you have insurance, you just have to pay your copay, which is like maybe $25, $30, $50, depending on the kind of insurance that you have. So please go ahead and schedule. Make sure when you go, you have a list of things you want to talk to your doctors about. Uh, things that you're not able to discuss with your loved ones. Things that you are feeling or you observing or you, the symptoms you are having. Maybe you're having tenderness in your breast or maybe your groin is hurting or maybe you're having a pain on the side of your stomach or maybe you have a sore throat and you've been using over-the-counter medications. Make sure you jot down all these things. So when you see your doctor, when you schedule, you are not, you know, parabolating all over. You don't know what to talk about. Uh, sometimes you don't need a specialist. And sometimes immediate intervention really will help. Trust me, before it becomes complicated. Most times we always overlook it. We're always looking at, well, um, the herbs, like what is going on right now. Uh, many of us are, you know, using ginger, we're using garlic, uh, we're using clove, we're using all kind of, you know, remedy, home remedy. Yes, they are working, but at the same time, we do not have the correct measurements. Some people have died from overdose of it, 
and some people really do not know the quantity of how to really measure and you know they have suffered the complications related to this so please if you are taking any vitamins you need to let your doctor know because uh, especially us Africans trust me we are pharmacists <laughs> we are born pharmacists and we, we know what um, to prescribe each other uh, last week trust me um, I was a little bit down I think you know something is wrong with me I don't know but you know I was a little bit down I'm not gonna say I'm depressed but something is wrong with my spirits and this is my father I called him up he was like you know what yesterday come to my house my boy I have a uh, manta malaria I'm gonna give to you yes I went I drove to his place and I took anti malaria he was able to prescribe how many to take daily he was able to tell me how many of the amoxicillin to take as well the vitamin C the vitamin D trust me is not in healthcare but he knows what to prescribe but you know I'm just saying this because a lot of us at times we know how to like boost ourselves up and I will just tell you you need to let your doctor know what you are taking that is not prescribed. And if you are taking any prescribed medication like antihypertensive meds, uh, diabetes, or any kind of medication that is being prescribed, you know, for your thyroid, you need to let the doctor know. And by you going for checkups, trust me, they will be able to either decrease or they can increase your dosage you know depending on what your test result says you going for your annual checkups they're able to draw your labs they do blood work they will they can do like a complete you know blood uh, count uh, your CMP and they can do your TSH T43 depending on what your doctor have on you and they can even do your hemoglobin A1C to determine your glucose level and this way you can know if to cut back on your sugar or you have to increase your sugar most times Africans black Americans we do eat a lot of starch like I'm originated I migrated from Nigeria I love rice and I love our uh, pounded yam. Some people call it pounded yam. But trust me, the effect of it, the after effect of it, you know, is not good. And sometimes some of us are already having pre-diabetic and we're still eating starchy foods. And at the end of the day, we started having like ulcers and we are blaming somebody. Oh, is my mother-in-law? Is my father-in-law? Is my sister-in-law? Oh, is somebody in my village? Trust me, most times it's not anybody responsible. It is you. It is what you consume because you did not know the proportion of what you have to do. So take this list to your doctor and your doctor will help you out. They can put you on a low carb diet, a no added salt or low sodium. I love salt. And if I eat, I still have to put a little bit um, salt. So in a way I'm a little bit um, blessed not to be hypertensive so but I have to watch it because age is telling on me so let your doctor know some people um, things will be happening with them and they will not discuss it with nobody they will just keep it the next thing you heard is oh they have stage 3 cancer they have stage 4 cancer but trust me Cancer did not just start. There will be little things going on. There will be little symptoms you will be having that you're not probably paying attention to. Um, like if you are having like a, a breast cancer symptoms, you might be having tenderness in your breast, which you're supposed to do a self-breast exam monthly where you're taking showers. You're supposed to have mammogram done. You know, you're at 35, they will recommend for you to do one. And then if you have a family history, you will have to do more often. Within three years, if your test results are fine, then you don't have to worry. Uh, for those with prostate cancer history, it could be benign and it could be malignant. And if you haven't pain down there, it could be two things. Probably you're not having enough sex. Or maybe you need to ejaculate yourself or you need to, you know, walk on yourself. You need to get it examined. Sometimes your primary doctor can examine you and make recommendations, give you antibiotics, talk to you about it, and then you can just be free. It's not until you wait till the last minute, and then we are now feeling pity for you. Please walk on your health. 
your eyes, you need to get it examined. You need to make sure you get ophthalmology consult yearly. Like me, for example, I use glasses and trust me, they have to mandate me and put it on my driver license for me to have like maybe one in my car. And I have more than 50 eyeglasses. It doesn't matter, it could be dark, it could be green, it could be pink. They are all recommended. And that's how much glasses I have. But I will not use it until I almost killed somebody driving one day. Because I couldn't see. So don't be like me. You have to go see the doctor. If you are prescribed a, a, a prescription glasses, you need to make sure you are using it. If not, your eyes will deteriorate. And trust me, you have to be maybe getting washed or vice versa. If you are having uh, trouble when you uh, wash your mouth and you are seeing uh, gums bleeding or probably your teeth are not as strong as they're supposed to, are you seeing the dentist? Do you have a dental insurance? Sometimes you can pay out of pocket too. Trust me, you will have doctors that can work with you. Do not be like me. You have the insurance, you're not using it. I have a friend, trust me, he uses his insurance like every other day. I'm like, whoa, if everybody uses the insurance the way you use it, the insurance company will go bankrupt. So please get your teeth examined. Let them look at it. Your earring, you have to make sure you're getting it. You know, you want them to look into it to make sure, you know, you're not having any wax in there. You know, most times we, we clean with cotton swab ourselves. But if you don't know how to do it, then you don't have to. You don't have to really, really go deep in there. Colonoscopy, if you're 50, make sure one way or the other you have had that scheduled. You need to make sure that they're going in, they're looking to make sure there's nothing cancerous there. Cancer is deadly. Trust me, it's very deadly. It's, it's, it's your own cells working against you after a while. Chemo, radiation, yes, they will use at the end of the day, but they destroy good cells as well, which really immune system will be uh, compromised. So please, before it's too late, you need to go out, schedule, see your doctor, discuss whatever your problem is. If you have a loved one, a sister, a brother, a mother, a close relative that died of any kind of disease complications, trust me, if they're very close to you, you have 25% risk. So you need to get yourself examined before it is too late. Yes, there are witches, there are wizards, however, some are myth. I remember growing up, um, I've had siblings, uh, not siblings, I've had like um, close relative cousins that have died of sickle cell. I don't know what sickle cell is then. I don't even, I, I know it, but I don't know the gravity until, you know, I'm more matured. And that's another topic for another day. But then those cousins will die. And all we say is, ah, somebody killed them. Trust me, they died of complication related to the disease process that they have that is not being treated. So pack all your medicines if you're not able to list them. If you're, if you're lazy, you can't write. You pack all your medications, put them in a bag, take it with you and go to the doctor. And make sure you let the doctor see it. Take all medications as prescribed. Do not take one out and say, you know what, I miss two in the morning, I'm not going to even take it, it will be tomorrow. If you miss it in the morning, make sure you take it at night or in the afternoon. Please don't skip your meds so it can work effectively as it's being prescribed. Because most times when you skip medications, most times when you don't take prescribed meds, the doctor will think that it's not working and they will prescribe you something else. But then you become resistant, resistance to what they're prescribing because it's not effective because we're not taking them. So please take them. For Christians like me and for Muslims as well or other religion people, I'm not saying there's no home remedy. All these herbs, so trust me, they're used to make these medications that we're taking. So you have to be able to quantify what you're taking. You are not a nurse practitioner. You are not a medical doctor, you are not a physician assistant, and you are not a registered nurse. So be very careful 
when you are over medicating yourself. Be very careful when you add more medication to the one you are being given. As a Christian, as a Muslim, as a, somebody who believes in other gods, trust me, you have to make sure you go by prescribed meds. Believing in God doesn't stop you from seeing your doctor. Trust me, a lot of us make that mistakes. We will be like, ah, I've been to church. They gave me holy water. They gave me oil. Yes, all those work in conjunction with what your doctor is giving you. Trust me. I love Indian doctors growing up because it's like, you know what? They, 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 they are eye openers to, to some things that happen to me. You know, they, they are there to listen. So you have to choose a doctor that you're comfortable with. If you're not comfortable with a particular doctor, then you don't have to be with them. If you're not comfortable with a Nigerian doctor, then change them. Get an Indian doctor like me. If you're not comfortable with a, a, a female doctor, then go for a male doctor. I love male doctors. GYN, gynecologist. When was your last pap smear? Ovarian cancer. If you detect that early, it can be treated. If not, you down there is going to be rotten. So please go for your pap smear once a year. And when you are flying, when your tests are fine for second year, then trust me, they will schedule you maybe every three years. Trust me, you have to get yourself checked out. You know, don't wait till the last minute. When things is going on with you, please discuss with your spouse, discuss with your children. If you still have parents, discuss with them. Most times we only run to our pastors. You need to run to a practitioner, your doctors, your medical doctors. Yes. I'm a firm believer that God do answer prayer. The God that we called uh, secretly and open and answer openly. But at the same time, you need to go and get medical advice. I'm coming out today to let people know, yes, there are a lot of diseases out there. Even with this COVID-19 going on, some people are asymptomatic. Sometimes you don't see anything going on with them. They're fine like me and you don't even know. You know, probably you've already been with your kids, with your family members, with your church members. Some people are still partying, you, as you can see on Facebook. You don't know who has what. Just because I'm not showing symptoms doesn't mean Mr. B or Mrs. B will not show. So please, let us make sure we take necessary steps to avoid and prevent diseases you know, from getting complicated in our body. You don't know what it is like to have a good health. You don't know what it is like to be lucky and be disease free. But at one time in life, something is going to happen. If you're somebody who doesn't exercise, definitely your bones, you know, is not going to work right. And then you're going to start having arthritis. And then you'll be having pains. And a lot of times it'll be, ah, it's because somebody twisted my bone. When was the last time you were at the gym? When was the last time that treadmill in your basement, when was the last time you were on it? Your, the, the tricycle that you have, when was the last time that you, you ride on it? So many of us invest money on equipment, but we don't use them. I'm one of them. So I'm not saying that, you know, I'm, I'm righteous or perfect. I'm just as guilty. So please... Be your neighbor's keeper and remind them that they need to get checked up. If you really care about someone, if you really love somebody, you need to talk to them. You need to give them a call. You need to give them a wake-up call. Mr. Somebody, Mrs. A, when was the last time you saw your doctor? Please be that person that is like the alarm, the wake-up bell for that person. Like me, my bosses, my friends at work, they be like, T, did you, you have to see the doctor, but trust me. You know, most times we that work in healthcare, we're non-compliance. We don't follow any protocol. We know it, but we don't follow. So please, if you have borderline diabetes, you need to walk, walk and watch your consumption of carbohydrates, starchy food, rice, um, semo, semo uh, vita, um, potatoes, yams. You know, all kind of food that have starch in them, the end stage is going to be converted into sugar. And that's going to bump your sugar up.
Trust me, if you watch your diet, you don't have to die of diabetes complications. Your hemoglobin A1C will let the doctor know the last three months if you are really real and you're really abiding by the diet given to you. So trust me, sometimes when we are going for blood work, we are very cautious of what we eat the, the last three days, which I do too. But the hemoglobin A1C, trust me, will tell on you. It will tell on you the last three months if you are really, really fear with what you eat. Hypertension as well. If you know you have family, close family, who um, have uh, blood pressure, you need to make sure you are watching your sodium intake, which is your salt. Any form of salt, you need to make sure you are watching it. A little bit is good. You know, that's why some restaurants, when you go over there, you always see that they use a little bit or they use none. You have to make sure you put it in yourself. So be very cautious of everything. A lot of us, we migrated to America. We saw abundant food. And the way we see it is the way we eat it. When you see people pack food, you'll be like, what? Who is eating that? I hear me, me, me. You need to be very cautious. Sometimes we just pack the food. We even do takeaways. And we put it in the fridge. What do we do with it? We trash them. So leave it for those people who need it. If you know you're not going to finish it, don't take a lot. Take a little bit of everything on your plate. Taste it. Move away from it. You have to be very careful. Uh, back when I was growing up, people did not have enough food. But here in America, anybody visits you at home, you give them food. It's abundant. That's a list of your worries. But trust me, food can kill when it's too much. So don't eat it the way you see it. Eat a balanced diet. Eat things in proportion. And make sure after looking over this video, if you're not with me now, make sure you call your doctor. Now everything is so good. Everybody has a phone. Unlimited um, data. Unlimited internet. Google. When you Google it, put it in. MD annual visits and it will tell you walking clinics trust me we have so many african setup clinics that you can go to we have so many indian ones so many chinese ones we have so many african americans ones so many caucasian ones so i know our culture doesn't you don't want people to know what is wrong with you but you can use people that is not of your native place so please go ahead and schedule you know health is wealth what is the benefit of you having a lot of money and you don't have good health and you don't have peace of mind what is the benefit of you being on oxygen O2 supplement and somebody else is spending your money you have to remember all these worldly things we are acquiring they're 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 gonna be vain at the end of the day if you're not there you know if you don't have a good health system then how are you going to use all these things you acquired? Those mansions that you built on water, on the sea, on places that poor people can go to. How are you going to utilize them? That will be somebody else's treasure, somebody else's garbage. Our children might not even want it. Trust me, because your house today that is a mansion, tomorrow is going to be outdated. Trust me. Every day we have new fashions. So please, please, please invest in yourself. Invest in yourself. While growing up back in the days when you have big stomach, I'm sorry, I don't mean to step on toes. That used to be a sign of being wealthy. Those are the rich people. I'm low. But right now, trust me, it's a sign of disease. If it's too big, you need to work on it. Trust me. That's a sugar, you know, excess sugar, you know, that can lead to you having diabetic at the end of the day. Most times we Africans, black Americans, we tend to scream. You know, when we're talking to our kids, I'm guilty of it too. We scream, we, it's like we're yelling. When we're talking, we're yelling. It's like we're screaming at each other. Yes, those things as well can make your vessel, you know, to have to ventilate. So please... Watch the way you talk. If you look at Caucasians, when they're talking to each other, trust me, you will fall in love with them. Even black Americans, the way they talk, unless they're mad, then you hear the FC and H going all together. But any other times, 
they save their voices and that's where their voices are better off so please let us cut back on our salt intake let us cut back on our sugar intake let us make sure we're eating you know proportionally and we're not eating the way we see it because trust me food abundantly can kill when you go out to a party make sure you take necessary precautions wash your hands don't take more than you can chew just a little bit do not yell if you don't have to all those yelling will cause headache will cause tension will cause you to lose your voice like i said i'm guilty as well so let us watch it let us make sure we are abiding and keeping ourselves safe after this um a little clip that i'm doing make sure you google and call a doctor if you have insurance call your insurance up they will tell you the list of doctors you can call do not uh, mind what kind of co-payments you have to do. Trust me, health is wealth. You are there, that's why they are calling you. If you are not there, they will call somebody else. So please, share this video clip. Make sure you raise awareness, you know, in your community. Make sure you raise awareness in your house. Make sure you raise awareness in your churches. Make sure you take necessary precautions. And with this COVID uh, pandemic that is going on, I pray that God in His infinite mercy will just let everything be a forgotten event in Jesus' name. Yet Ball Entertainment Network, we are out here to promote people. So it's not uh, only dedicated to religion, religious things. Because people are saying it's about Christianity. No, it's not. It's about, you know, if you know how to sew masks, if you know how to do wig, if you know how to paint face, if you know how to make glasses, if you know anything, if you are, you know, if you have a talent, if you have a gift, if you know that you are confident of what God has put and is still in you, trust me, reach out to me. If I know you, I'm going to reach out to you. So please, my brothers, my sisters, my fathers, my mothers, grandmas, I'm not old enough to talk to you guys. But I believe that even though I'm a young child, I'm a baby to you all, I the little things I've said today, we go a long way. Please discuss your health issues with your uh, advanced practitioners, with your doctors. Please do not hide them. Don't wait till it is too late. I love you and I know God loves you most. Uh, lately we've been having so many deaths and really it's getting to me. You know, at a point in time, everybody will get down at their destination. But somehow, we can prolong and extend the time God has given to us by us eating healthy and by us abstaining from things we're not supposed to do. Please, please, please. If it doesn't add value to you, you need to stay away from it. If you're in an environment that doesn't add value to your existence, please find new friends, find new environment, do new things. You know that is going to glorify God in you. I say truly yes. And until next week, I have this person coming. I'm not going to mention his name, but he's going to be coming live. And afterwards, we're going to be talking about health issues. We're going to talk about sickle cell, and I have passion for that. So stay tuned, and you have a great week, a new month, and I love you. Yet today, bye. I wasn't.